Hey guys, welcome back to the high performance build that is almost complete on the foundation level. So tomorrow we have the slab pour. This slab is only gonna be two inches thick. It has no weight put on it whatsoever. It's not structural at all. So the inspector doesn't care, the structural engineer doesn't care. Um, what we're doing is kind of interesting though. So I wanted to just show you this. We have a five layer cake underneath the house. If you don't know, this is part of a series. This is not a standalone video. We have over 300 videos on our channel. So please, if this is your first time seeing this, go explore more. All kinds of weird stuff that we're doing for a very specific reason. I'm not just some Joe Schmo who's um, doing weird stuff with no background in this. So first layer, compacted dirt that we had to pay to bring in here uh, because we had really weird dirt conditions. So compacted dirt that was compacted more than four times with a vibrating trench roller. Second layer is this gravel. This is called 57 stone gravel. We tried to get as much of it washed as possible. It's not really important until we move outside the foundation wall and we're trying to protect that form of drain. But of course the form of drain that's the form of the foundation footings is staying in place and that is gonna become our drain tile, that's slotted drain tile, and also the radon mitigation system and also the humidity control for the uh, crawl space. And to learn more about that, see that video. That is gonna allow this whole subslab area to breathe, which is really important because we're gonna be sucking on it with a radon mitigation fan. Radon becomes very important if you're in a radon area, which we are, and also my parents have a house not far from here and the radon level there recently was 19 in the house. So yeah, we have a problem with radon. And if you don't know whether you have a problem with radon, you need to go and investigate further on another uh, avenue about that. Because that's all I'm gonna talk about as far as that goes. So this is layer number two. Layer number three, beautiful uh, high density rock wool insulation. This stuff, I'm kneeling on it right now. Ugh, you cannot hurt it, it's made of rocks. This stuff can withstand 1100 pounds per square foot of pressure on it. Um, and so it's fine. I weigh 200 pounds or less, and I'm the only thing that is going to be pressing on this because the two inch slab, the concrete that we're gonna be pouring is 25 pounds per square foot. That's basically it. So while I'm standing on this, it's gonna have a little bit of force on it, but not too important. In fact, you could even use the Comfort Board 80, this being the Comfort Board 110 from Rockwool. The 80 has a pounds per square foot rating of like 430, something like that. And even that, I'm not gonna hit that. This insulation, very easy to work with. If you have not seen me work with Rockwell insulation, I pretty much don't use any other insulation lately. Beautiful knife, two edges on it, I like. Turns it into stuff like this. Again, very, very rigid. It is basically playing with blocks at this point. And so you can see how we had to cut around this pier. Um, we've got minimal interruptions within the field of this what will be the slab, and that helps. The more things you've got coming up through the slab, like plumbing, if you're embedding it down there, et cetera, et cetera, I have the sewer and the water pipes going through the bottom of the foundation wall, so they're not going down through this. Makes it a lot easier. This also has guides on it. You can see the shadows here, and that helps you cut in a straight line as you're cutting down it, both this way and this way. It'll be completely covering everything with no real gaps in between. As you can see, some of it is, you know, like sitting like this and like this. Once we start, first of all, doing the next layer and also pouring the slab on top, not gonna have a problem with that. It'll all even out. The next layer on top of the insulation is the Pango Wrap. This is a 15 mil class one vapor barrier uh, which is the only place that plastic should definitely be in a build, in my opinion, is on top of dirt or something that's gonna be connected to dirt because a lot of water gets evaporated up from the ground. So this is gonna go down, it's going to block vapor. That's not all it does. It's from Stego Industries and they have a lot of different membranes. The Pango is the only one that is termite proof. They've tested it and subterranean termites do not come up through this. They don't like it at all. In fact, they don't even like the tape that we're gonna connect it to the wall with. So this stuff is a double-sided, it's basically a solid adhesive with two peel-off layers. It's two inches tall, so what we're gonna do is put that along the bottom of the foundation wall. This is something that ended up being kind of a topic of conversation with uh, the people at Stego. And um, you can either connect this to the top of the footing if the footing is smooth, and so we made sure to say, oh, let's make sure to trowel the top of this footing, which we did. But then, of course, what happens after that is that we pour foundation walls. And this being uh, a pier is not quite the same thing, but you can see that this is not really that smooth. 
It's because more concrete was kind of splashing around and it's really hard to get it as glassy smooth as it is when you freshly troweled it. So we're just gonna go ahead and attach it directly to the foundation wall. So the pango wrap will come up the first two inches of the foundation wall and then we're going to pour the fifth layer of our layer cake, which is the two inch slab on top of that. It's gonna have a fiberglass admixture in it, which is basically replacing the rebar or the wire mesh that you would put into the slab because two inches is very thin. It's possible that that wire mesh would kind of be floated to the surface and you'll be able to see it from, the, from above and that's not good. And also it might float to the bottom and that's not good either. So we're gonna replace that with just a simple fiberglass admixture. It's something that they just mix into the concrete. You'll see that when we're pouring. You, hopefully you won't see it, it'll be invisible, but it'll work the same way. So that essentially is gonna complete our foundation pour. Once we're done with that and that's dried, we can start framing, which I'm so excited about because this entire process of, depending on the weather, um, has been really interesting. I will say that one thing that is um, interesting to me is thinking about what happens when it rains on my new boat or my bathtub, basically, that I've built here. That's gonna be, it doesn't have any way to get out. So I'm probably gonna have a pump that I'm going to install down here uh, that's just going to get rid of rainwater as it collects or snow, God forbid, uh, in Atlanta here as we're building. I wish I had some wood, maybe a log, an old box cutter and a sheet. I'm building you a present you couldn't buy. Something perfect and complete. So now our five layers are complete. We just are finishing the pour of the two inch slab that has the fiberglass admixture. And what I mentioned in the foundation wall video, everybody in the footing video was like, you need a slump test. Then we had Matt Reisinger chime in and he said, don't worry about a slump test, look at the ticket. And today that came in really handy because we actually looked at the ticket right after they were starting to pour and it did not say there was a fiberglass admixture in there. There's no rebar in this and so it was really important to do this. We cut it off, we had somebody run to the plant, grab the fiberglass admixture, bring it back here, mix it in real good. So anyway, look at your ticket. That is important because sometimes it goes wrong. We have paid our last check to our foundation subcontractor. Remember, I am the builder and the subcontractors work for me. I tell the contractor what I would like to do, all of the special high performance stuff, they give me a price to do that. At that point, I do not say, well, can you give me a deal? What I do is say, okay, great. Here's the payment schedule that we're gonna work on. And I do not haggle on prices. When you walk into a restaurant, the steak is $40. You don't say, can I have it for 32? So yes, I'm asking for more special stuff from all of the subcontractors and trades that I work with, but I'm also willing to pay them what it costs and to give them extra time to do it exactly right. So all of the upcharges on the extra labor that were uh, charged because of the weather problems, because of the high performance material and system problems, I went ahead and paid all that and without argument because I know what I'm asking for. So we should be getting better work. We should be paying people what they're worth. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, comment. Tune in next time.